constitution says equality. Nobody will go against equality. We are not sleeping anymore. They used to challenge us. This time we are challenging them. They will face our wrath. The Nigerian Senate President Ahmad Lawan and the Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila shunned women who gathered at the National Assembly complex in protest against the rejected gender-inclusive bills on Wednesday. Oh. The protesting women had demanded to meet with the presiding officers of the National Assembly over the rejected bills. Because yesterday we saw that some votes, some, some bills didn't scale through. But Bajabi Amila did one or two things. After explaining to them, they realized, oh, okay, let us have a second uh, opportunity. We still have till tomorrow for them to bring up the bills again, have a vote again, and give us our demands. Though some senators, including Robert Borofis, Ali Yusabi Abdullahi and Nora Dadut had been delegated to address the protesters, they had remained adamant, demanding that the Senate President and Speaker of the House address them personally. I have led Senate's delegation to speak to several groups that have the same demand as you. The militants from the Niger Delta, religious organizations, traditional rulers, Nigerian Labour Congress, ASU. The tradition of the Senate is to send the leadership of the Senate to speak to the groups. The question is, the business of the Senate has to continue, but at the same time, we must listen to you. So that explains why we were selected to come here on directive. It's very possible that such traditions can be amended. Yes. We are sending our voices, representing Nigerian women, appealing to the Senate president so that we can go and sleep. Or else, I don't know whether I will feel comfortable sleeping in his own house and we are sleeping here. We are lawyers, we are lawyers, we are professors. We know you can handle it for us. We have even seen you that you will become our allies. But we need to see him, sir. Whether After a long period of back and forth, the delegates agreed to relate the women's message to the presiding officers who were yet to address the protesters at the time of filing this report. <laughs> Hundreds of women had arrived at the National Assembly complex over the gender inclusive bills. The protesters, who were members of different women groups, described the rejection as disappointing and backward. Very disappointed. You know, it's very disappointing because when you look at issues of law, you are talking about leaving 50% of your population behind. They are not involved in decision making, and you are happy to do that. You know, the fact that they could come out. And, 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 you know, vote massively against this law shows that we don't have women in the House. We don't have women in National Assembly. There are very few women. These women cannot give us the votes. We are talking of representation. We are talking of the quality of decision making in the National Assembly, in our national lives. They described the bill as an attempt to shut out more than half of the nation's population from the decision making process. Because we are not asking for too much. The 35% are for many, and also the 111 seats we sit in the National Assembly and the State House of Assemblies. And not even only that, the political parties, the Nigerian political parties, have to go beyond, do better than keeping on giving us the, 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 the glorified woman leader position. Rather, include women in their executive leadership positions of their respective political parties. So that is why we are here. Women are gathered there to show their utter disappointment with the whole of the National Assembly. I mean, what's happening in the world now is that women are being recognized and Nigeria is supposed to be a great nation in Africa and we refuse to do what other people are doing. Rwanda has 60 something percent, Namibia, you know, big countries. And if you see in the past, the places where things were well managed during COVID are where women are leaders. Why can Nigeria not be one of them? We've been advocating, we've been lobbying them to make sure some key, some key issues are taken care of in the amendment to the constitution. We, 
uh, the wife of the president went, the wife of the vice president went, and they promised. We are not asking for favors, we are asking for our rights. So we are calling National Assembly. The vote ought to be public. It's a vote on constitutional amendment. They need to release the list, the records of votes, so that we will know those who stood with women and who stood with democracy and those who fought against it and who are threats to our democracy and development. We want the legislators to support the cause of women because it is for their good. These women we are talking about, they are their mothers, they are their sisters, they are their daughters. They are people that they work with every day. So if they are good in the home, they are also good out of the home. They are good in government, they are good everywhere. Some men were also present at the protest ground and joined in the call for women inclusion in governance. In an age where the world is grappling with issues around gender equality, affirmative action, to see our leaders at the National Assembly stifle a cause such as this, it calls a lot to question. It raises a lot of troubling thoughts. Yeah, I'm here because of women, and I believe that it is uh, right, it is right for you guys to have a place in authority, especially in municipal arena. So I'm here to support you, I'm here to tell, because I cannot respect the bill that they passed, you know, if women are not given a space. And not even just a space. You should be involved in decision making.